I had a project that was sponsored by a snowboard company, and what they wanted us to do was to test their different snowboards to better understand the performance characteristics of their boards. One of the things we did was that we instrumented their snowboard with what are called strain gauges. Strain gauges are uh, small instruments that measure the stretch of the material. By fastening these gauges to the snowboard, and as the snowboard deflects, this will give us an indication as to how much they stretch. So by placing these at uh, opportune locations all across the board, we laid uh, six of them out here on the snowboard, you can then get an image of how this snowboard is deflecting as it's being used. We also added an uh, accelerometer. An accelerometer measures vibration. It measures how much that this snowboard is shaking. We then took all of these and through this uh, umbilical here connected to a laptop that was carried in the professional snowboarder's back in a backpack. And then we went down uh, the mountain and in the half pipe in order to measure how much this, this board was deflecting and get a sense of how the snowboard was performing. Once we then took this information, we were able to go back into the lab and get a better understanding of the way the, the multiple snowboards were deflecting depending on the different materials in the board. So let me just take a minute to explain how a strain gauge works. Basically a strain gauge is a stamp that has a wire running through it that squiggles back and forth like this. And this you then take and fasten to the snowboard. And as this stamp stretches with the snowboard that's deflecting and stretching, then the resistance in this wire so there's current running through the wire. So as this stretches, the resistance of the wire causes the current of the electricity going through it to change. And that's what we actually measure in order to get a sense of the strain, the amount of deflection of this, that this whole thing stretches. That's how we get a result from it that we can measure on the computer. And what you'll see in a, in a second here is the actual squiggles of the amplitudes of that change in current that you see on the strain gauges. What you see in this picture, this is a picture from our actual testing that we performed on the, at the mountain. And what you see here is the, the professional going through the half pipe and he's actually getting air and, and as he's jumping out through the half pipe. This is actually me standing here watching him. But what you can see is the snowboard is here and you can see that cord, which I call the umbilical, that's going up to the backpack where the laptop is collecting all the information. Down here, you can, this is a, a map of the data we were collecting from the different strain gauges in the accelerometer. Each color represents a different strain gauge that we placed on the different spots on the board. And so as that board is stretching and flexing, as he's going down through the half pipe, we're getting different strains that we're reading on, off of the board. The, the bottom one here, this is from the accelerometer. So that accelerometer is measuring the shake of the board. This is how much it's vibrating. And so you can see that there's a lot of vibration, then it dies out, then a lot of vibration, and then it dies out. It's almost pretty, uh, fairly periodic. What that actually shows is when it's died out, that's when the pro is actually in the air. So the board isn't shaking as much. And so what we're actually able to tell them, given that that's time, is we were able to tell the, the snowboarder what his hang time was, how much time he was actually in the air. So we then took a lot of these different boards and tested them through using uh, in the, the half pipe. And by looking at the different uh, sets of squiggles, the, the, what the, the strain gauges uh, told us, is how much different flexion, flexion was going on and how much vibration was going on with each type of board. And so we were able to feed that back to them for different types of materials and layups that they used uh, in manufacturing the board. Now the other benefit that we got from collecting this data is that this was helpful for us to do testing back in a more controlled environment in the laboratory with the snowboarding robot that we designed. If I were to ask you 
how, if you're going snowboarding and I ask you how much force you use to make a turn, for example, how much you lean into the board, you really couldn't tell me. What you do is actually just start to lean and then as you start to turn, you either lean more or lean less until you get the results you want. Well, that's a challenge for us as we're doing testing. We needed to know how much force we should put into the snowboard. So the advantage we had, because we had this data and these snowboards that were instrumented, we put the snowboards onto that snowboarding robot and then we adjusted the forces until we got the same types of uh, performance, squiggles, that we saw in the laboratory as we saw out on the mountain. Then we felt confident we were simulating the actual use on the mountain. The advantage is that now we had the opportunity to do this in a controlled environment and in a repeatable environment. We could then use the robot to do the same thing over and over again so we could test the boards consistently. 